blast off. Yes, a blast off. That's right. Now, the reason he did that next to me is I did a countdown. I always do that with Kimmy just so we have a, a you know, a where to start the video at. And I am with, well, I hope you don't mind, legend. 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 I am with Neil Adams. Neil Adams, the legend. The legend. Me and other legends. The troublemaker of comic books. Gather in legendary places to eat legendary food and drink legendary drinks because we are indeed legends. I am legend. And, and, and the troublemaker at and times. Knee high to a grasshopper. Oh, now, see, now you're telling jokes. I am. That's not a joke. That's a punchline. Okay. Punchline. Know the difference between jokes and punchline. Now he's playing the editor. The joke is. The joke is. <laughs> what is orange soda to a locust? And the answer is knee high to a grasshopper. See, that's a oh, joke. That's the joke. That's a joke. Okay. Punchline joke. You're supposed to laugh. <laughs> okay, let's go. Okay, well, what thank you. What are talking about today? Well, first of all, you're here at MegaCon all four days. Yes, I am here all four days. Get in before everybody and leave after everybody. You are the hardest working man in comic books, right? Yeah, come on, come on. You do, he does. He leaves real late. He doesn't leave early at all. He's, he's here the whole sure, time, the whole time. Late. And has plenty of his artwork here. He's signing and... And having a wonderful time. And if you're not here, I'm disappointed in you. If you're in any part of the country that's close to us, you should get over here fast because Frank Miller is here, a real legend. And Stan Lee. And incidentally, myself. Yes, and, and he is here. Now, Neil, I'm going to... I don't want to put you on the spot because you well you've been the Mr. Bad guy to I'm some people at times. Mr. Bad. Now, you know, and I good guy. Yes, you are a good man, you know. White hat, white horse. I do that good guy. I have the white hat. A anyhow, question I'm going to ask you. I'm talking about that hat. I got to tell you. Uh, you don't like the hat, I know. Because we have a joke about that hat, too. You say I have a Charlie Chan hat. You, you know have That's what he did. He called me Charlie Chan. No, I said I said your hat looks like a Panama hat had sex with a pork pie hat and had a little tiny midget and it's called that okay question I was going to ask over the course of time <laughs> no, I, I'm just letting it go I'm letting it go uh, the, the question I was going to ask is over the course of time we conventions have changed the comic book convention moving into a pop culture convention almost everywhere yeah do you see an explosion of let's say the print art way more than it used to be where like I see an explosion of cosplay, and I see an explosion of uh, actors. Uh, I, there are in uh, artists in what we call Artist Alley, uh, the sale of prints, uh, some by the artists that do the prints, and some by people who actually rip the artists off and pretend that the work is either theirs or that they have a right to do it. Uh, and we're seeing an awful lot of that, a proliferation of that, uh, just like we're seeing people uh, stealing uh, people's things in the, at the conventions. People are discovering that uh, it's okay to commit robberies at conventions because there's lots of money floating around. I just talked to a guy a little while ago who came. He had $15,000 worth of collectible comic books. He put his rocket pack on because he was a Ghostbuster, turned around, and his comic books were gone. Stolen. I have him now talking to the police and reporting this so that he gets a number and that uh, the police will report it because these kinds of the last convention I was at four there were four robberies including our booth we lost twenty thousand dollars our passports and our uh, identification so this is beginning to happen we're starting to get some not very nice people at these conventions because you know after a while, they attract people like that. You're gonna, you're just gonna find that happening. It's, it's not a good thing. I, I would think also pickpockets would be more with more people. I don't know. I don't know. I haven't met anybody who. Uh, I, I, it's a pretty rowdy crowd here. Somebody here catches a pickpocket, they're gonna beat the crap out of them. But uh, it's so much easier to pilfer stuff because there's art and people put things down because they trust people. You go to a comic book convention, you trust everybody, and suddenly that's maybe not such a good idea. Now, Neil, I want to ask... Which brings, me, okay. brings us to your subject. Okay, go, my go subject, right we'll, we'll, we'll go right back to it. Do you, do you think there's an, either an ignorance or just ignoring the copyright trademark rules, laws? Well, we all, we all ignore the copyright trademark laws because we're doing things that the companies may find to be questionable. So it's very hard for people who are doing some of these things to be talking about them because everybody's kind of doing it, okay? Uh... Some are doing it with the permission of the companies because the companies feel, you know, this is just advertising and promotion for their comic books. So they have artists uh, that are doing prints and are doing uh, drawings of, of uh, their characters. 
to the benefit of the com uh, the companies because it's sort of like going to the movies, you know, or, or having somebody outside the movie drawing a picture of Batman. So there is a lot of uh, 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 kind of friendly um, exchange of uh, ideas and perhaps stepping across the copyright law. Uh, the good people don't abuse the privilege, but there are people out there who do abuse the privilege. They actually not only uh, use characters, but they steal drawings that are done by artists, that, uh, that artists are nice enough to uh, have appear on the internet, and they take them and they, and they sell them as if uh, somehow they have permission, somehow uh, they are allowed to or encouraged to, when in fact the artists do not encourage or allow them to at all. And so they're ripping the artists off. My son uh, was involved in a similar situation. Uh, people were lifting his uh, drawings and using them for um, letterheads and uh, things that they send to other people. And and uh, and, the, and my son established uh, helped to establish. Uh, uh, these things are called tubes. They're called tubes. And and now what you do is, if you want to license your stuff, you can do a series of drawings and for. Uh, 10, 20, or, or, or 30 dollars, the people buy the license to use your drawings on their letterheads or whatever it is that they want to use. This hasn't gotten that far. This is simply stealing people's artwork and not paying them for the use of them and, and printing them and selling them at conventions as if they had permission. And I recommend to people that if, if you run into a situation like this and there's any question in your mind, have this person show uh, and testify, and even you know, uh, uh, prove that these uh, that this artwork belongs to these people, and they have a right to sell it. Because if they don't have a right to sell it, you're participating in an illegal act by somebody who is unscrupulous enough to steal somebody's artwork. And and you don't want to be part of that. I don't want to be part of it. I don't think anybody does. You know, very often the artists are right there at the convention. You can go and get a print from them. Why not do that? Why get it from these people? It's also uh, something that the conventions ought to be paying attention to. Mm. The conventions ought to be cognizant of the people that they're renting booths to. If you're renting a booth to somebody who is simply ripping artwork off the internet and selling it, you have to have somebody on your staff who is knowledgeable enough to know that this is what's going on and can raise the question and find out what the truth is and not allow those people at your convention. There's, there's booths for everybody. There's, there's every city has artists and artisans who have things to sell. And those are the people sh who should be at these booths, but not people who are ripping things off. That, that's a wrong thing. Do you think, because I, I talk to, I have some friends who are print artists, and they say they want to get into comic books. That's their goal. Their goal is to be in a comic. Can, can they actually do that? Is that a way to get into the world? I think, I think, I think the most, the amount of time that you spend uh, drawing is the amount of time that you're possibly going to improve. But that doesn't make any kind of guarantee that you're going to get into comic books because comic books takes another kind of art. It's not a print art, it's, it's a sequential art. And if you don't know how to do a sequential art, then you're really, a, the nicest print in the world maybe will make a cover. Maybe will make a cover. But there's also artists that are doing sequential art that will do that same cover. And the companies would rather have them do it than somebody from the outside, unless the work is brilliant. So. It's, it's a step toward it, but the question is, did that, did that person l learn the basics of sequ sequential art? Mm, more often than not, these guys who are at the conventions, uh, they just specialize in doing, you know, the pretty face and the kind of cute little poster, and it's, it's, a, it's a, an, almost a side business. And if they do it, and they do it sincerely, and they aren't ripping somebody off, then God bless them. They should make money at these conventions. And, the, and every town and every city has these people, and, and they should do well. They all want to become comic book artists, but it takes a tremendous amount of training. It's sort of like, it's sort of like becoming a doctor or a lawyer. You can't do it without the training. You can't just make a pretty picture and suddenly you're a comic book artist. You have to learn how to do sequential art. And, you know, you know as a warning, uh, to people, uh, sometimes that's not even better. Sometimes you can come to a convention and sell enough art that you're making as much money as a comic book artist. Wow. And maybe that's okay, you know? But if you want to be a comic book artist and you want to be in the business, it takes a lot more training. Okay. There you heard it from Neil Adams. I hope some of my friends who are uh, poster artists and print artists 
take, uh, and, take word of that. And I hope some conventions pay a little bit more attention to some of the people that they're allowing to come to their conventions. Want them to vet it, basically. Well, of course. Yeah. I mean, it's... Uh, look, between you and me and the fence post, I don't like sharp swords at conventions. I like the fake swords that people don't get hurt by, and that's something that pe we ought to be looking after. I know there's one uh, group, a convention group, that is not allowing the sharp swords. Kid could cut off somebody's arm. Sure. It's not something that we should pay attention to in a good way. Should pay attention to it in a critical way. Before something bad happens. I, I would hate to f read a headline that says, you know, kid's arm cut off. Oh, I bought it at a comic book convention. We don't want to hear that. We don't want to hear that. Well, Neil, I know you're here for the rest of the time. You're here all four days. Megacon, stop by Neil's uh, booth. have a good time. Stop by his, t his table. Me Let me just say this. Comic book conventions are the best thing in the world. They're better than circuses. You know, at a circus, you go to a circus, you have a wonderful time, you eat a lot of bad food, and then you throw up. Not at comic book conventions. You never throw up. You go out and have dinner. You come back the next day and have a good time as well.